anybody. Your intelligence grows over time. It's not fixed. Yes, very. That's key, right? Anything else that you heard? The parents' feedback is important, or their praise, how they work. That is very important. Mm -hmm. If you're telling a student they're smart, and then all of a sudden they come up against something that's challenging, they no longer see themselves as smart. Yes. That the classroom is sometimes viewed as an area where they're just being evaluated versus yes. being developed. Yes. It's important, mm -hmm. right? Same thing. So to promote a growth mindset with your student, the end goal is learning and overall improvement. And that one's effort and persistent does pay off in the end. And that mistakes, we learn through our mistakes all the time. And mistakes are valuable because of that fact. The second one is teamwork. You can help your child at home when they said, Mom, I, Mom or Dad, I don't get this. I don't understand it. Well, work as a team rather than taking over your child's thinking. Once you take that pencil out of your, out of your child's hand, you own the thinking now. Let your child keep that pencil and you and your child talk their, their thinking or her, his or her thinking through. Instead, ask questions. What sense can you make of this? What do you notice about this problem? What are things that you do know for sure? Might there be an easier problem we can use to help you solve this or think about it? And I love this question because nine, time, nine times out of ten stu um, students will respond. At first, when you say, well, what do you know about this problem? They said, I don't know. And then if you follow up with this last one, if you did know, what might you say? All of a sudden, they start talking about the things that they do know. And then that gives them some leverage point to actually move into solving the problem. I've seen it time and time again. The last one is to play games with your students, not just on the internet, but games that are important for, to develop students' visualization, spatial reasoning, um, pattern recognition, classification, comparison. All right, these, we've got to go back to playing those games. Shoots and ladders. You know, that, that's a hundreds chart on shoot, shoots and ladders game, right? Go back and play Yahtzee. You know, Yahtzee is multiplication. You, you roll how many fours, right? Or roll how many sixes? Um, and then you're adding and you're multiplying. Okay, so go back to those games that we grew up with. They were there for a reason. Early on, start kids saw putting puzzles together. They need puzzles again. And they need to physically put them together because they're looking for patterns, right? Can you, can you please write that uh, Yahtzee game? How do you spell it? Oh, yeah. Um, I've got Yahtzee is Y-A-H-T-Z-E. -E. In fact, I've got a handout for you for some of these games, okay? Um, and then, not only do they help with these cognitive skills or structures, but they also help students develop mathematics, you know, mathematical understanding, like one-to-one -one correspondence or number recognition or estimation or inequalities or graphing, like Battleship, right? Battleship is all about the coordinate plane in the first quadrant. So I've got some pictures of games, um, and then here's a set game. I love this game. I love this game. I highly recommend getting this game, okay, in your in your home. Um, and you can find them online. You can also find them at Barnes and Noble. Let's go to this. Is it an online game or is it a well? It's actually a physical game that you can play, but there's also an online version, okay? Here's the game, the set game, okay? But it's an online version where you have to find combinations of three cards that form a set. And so, um, for example, in order to be a set, there's four attributes that you're paying attention to. You're paying attention to color, shape, number of shapes on a card, and the shading, okay? 
So for example, um, we're, in order to be a set, each attribute either has to be all the same or all different. So we could do this one right here, one, let's see, one, two, I don't know if that can be a set, but let's see. This is one, it's green. This is green, let's see. Oh, can't see that. Hmm. Oh, here's a set right here. One, two, three. I'll click on it. See? So they're all two, right? They're all the same shape. They all have they all have um, the same shading, right? But they are also um, different colors, all different colors. So that's a set. I would encourage, it's just uh, setgame.com is the uh, website. And I would encourage you to go on to the website and learn how to play with your child. Is it three out of the four attributes then? Is that what no, it's any combination. So you could have a set by no attributes being alike. But for every attribute, attribute, they either have to be all alike or all different. Okay. Pardon the interruption. At this time, the first session should be concluding. You'll have about a 10 minute break. Just so you know, there are refreshments outside the media center. So if you want to grab, there's like yeah, soft drinks and water and coffee and a few snacks. You want to grab some before your next session, which starts at 11. Thank you. Thank you. So I have, um, yeah, I've got some ideas. I wrote up a little article for you. I do have games and websites in this handout. If you'd like um, any more information, my name is actually, and website or email is actually at the bottom. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Questions or comments? Ken, Ken, is that the one that uses the, 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 the numbers the, and the operations? operations. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that on the airplane. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, right. Sudoku's on there. Yeah. Um, you know, Legos, Legos are especially important for young girls to play with because that develops spatial reasoning again. Okay. Any comments about that? Legos made a huge uh, investment in developing products, girls specific. Yes, they did. They, they absolutely, and you can go to their, to their corporate website and look at more of what they're willing to do. Yeah. Like even to the point of robotics. Right, exactly. Yeah. Lego. Yeah. And we'll. So, with your support and working with their teachers, you can help your child actually become mathematically powerful, meaning that they'll be able to be flexible in their thinking, accurate, efficient, use number sense and properties to actually solve the problems. Um, and that's the end of the presentation. Any comments or questions? I have one. Yes. Um, when my daughter was in the first grade, her teacher used to send her um, some kind of, uh, it was like a, uh, like a game. And analytical and critical thinking skills. It was like it was just fun not only for her, right. only to sit with her and uh, look at it. But when I asked the teacher what was the resource she used or what kind of books I can find uh -huh. or something like that, it's not it's not something you find on the, you may find it on the net, but it was something we can do it just as a, a pleasurable thing. Right. So do you have any kind of suggestions? Like what am I looking for? Uh, like for example, there would be some kind of lines and then uh, arrange or what arrange the lines in a particular sequence. Right. That would be the kind of question. So this is called scramble squares. And I tell you, this is kind of addicting um, because it's like a puzzle, but you have to line up. This one happens to be on kittens or cats, right? And you have to line up the upper part of the body to the bottom part or the lower part of the body and in a three by three arrangement. Okay, and it's square. And this is tricky, and it's challenging. Um, but again, it's helping students pay attention to um, 
the patterning. It's also helping them think about what strategies have I tried, which, which ones have I, haven't I tried. Um, there is a mathematical solution to this game. All right, so this is another, and it's listed on, on your games list, too. Thank you.